Okay, it's so I have 30. So we're going to start. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, welcome to the July 19th, 2021 Landmarks Committee meeting. My name is Saida Harrigan, and I'll be moderating the technical aspects of tonight's meeting. A few notes for you, particularly if this is your first meeting with us, you'll notice that you are muted and unable to mute yourself. After each presentation, the co-chairs will call on members of the public who wish to speak. You can ask to be recognized by raising your virtual hand. You can do that by going to the reactions button at the bottom of your screen and selecting raise hand. It's important not to raise your physical hands or wave at the screen because we may not be able to see you among the participants. If you are on a phone, you can raise your hand by pressing star nine and star six to unmute. Once you're recognized by the co-chair, I'll unmute you and you may be prompted to confirm unmuting on your device. If you're using an older version of Zoom, you can access the raise hand feature by clicking the participants button on the bottom uh, of your screen and selecting raise hand. Uh, the chat function is available for technical support only, not to ask questions of the co-chairs. You can send me a chat if you're having any technical troubles and I will walk you through whatever issues you may be having. And with that, I'll pass the mic over to co-chairs. Well, Jane, David's not quite here yet. Well, we're going to start. Um, I'm Jane Parshall, the um, co-chair of the Landmarks Committee of Community Board 8. Thank you, Saida. As Saida mentioned, this is the July meeting of the Landmarks Committee of Community Board 8. We have four applications before us. We will vote on the context and appropriateness of each application and formulate a resolution, which will go to our full board, which is meeting this coming Wednesday for the first time in person at the Hunter um, Elementary and High School up on 94th and Madison. With that, we're going to begin. Um, the first application is 1022 Lexington Avenue in the Upper East Side Historic District. This is the third time we've heard this application. It's a beautiful old building and we want to make sure it's contextual within the historic district. So the applicant has kindly come back to us again to make a new presentation on half the, especially the side elevation on 73rd Street. So with that, we can go to the applicant, Saida. I actually don't see Ted. Okay, Ted, if you're here, raise your hand. Oh, okay. You can confirm unmuting. Yes. Can you hear me now? I do. Yeah, here. we can. Okay, and I believe Olga is on also. So if she can share her screen. Absolutely. <clears throat> uh, good evening, members of Community Board Number Eight Landmarks Committee. Uh, we are returning because we were disapproved the last time we presented a month ago on our elevations. We were doing a elevation uh, elevation change to the first floor level and adding infill at the third and fourth floors at the rear of the building. Uh, the biggest concern for the infill of the third and fourth floors was that it did not really blend in well with the building. So we took the, the committee's uh, input on that and did our best to have it, that portion blend in better with the existing building. We did not accentuate the differential between the existing uh, existing building and the new portion of the building as landmark landmarks typically wants us to do we had to blend in better uh, it will be brick instead of stucco as a finish uh, all of those actually showing the screen for that right now uh, that will be brick to match existing and be painted it's only slightly darker so you would actually be able to tell that that's that corner two stories it's about uh, 11 12 feet in length uh, that will be added and then at the first floor level, we also took the uh, committee members' uh, comments into effect in terms of the amount of glass. We reduced the amount of glass from what previously was being proposed as 33.3% down to 31.5%, which over our previous approval from you is only 0 0.07 more glass as opposed, as opposed to almost 2% more glass. Uh, and with that, we also broke up the glass because the comments were that the glass was overbearing in terms of it being too, too big of a wall of glass. We broke them up uh, into smaller panes. We also provided a bulkhead at the, the entry of the commercial portion of the building at the western end because they really won't need those portions to be opened up 
uh, for their street service. So there is the normal entry at the closer Lexington Avenue side, which is what would be the east side of the, of the building, which is a full set of doors and then a full single panel all the way to, at the other end at the west end. And then the infill portions, just those three uh, center sections of glass will be the ones that will be open for street service. And as, as I mentioned, we broke those up into smaller sections of glass. So they reflected the glass panes that are, that are up above and a little bit more reflective of that look. And it also breaks up the visual appeal, uh, the visual look of, of the flat glass as opposed to broken up glass. Uh, in addition, on Lexington Avenue, we also did a reflection of what's at the second story and did the similar thing at the first floor level to break up the panes of glass and have that look more contextual for this building and items that were appealed to the uh, members of the, co the commission earlier so we could be able to retain those items, how they looked also. Those are our only real changes from the last time to this time. I'm sorry, we lost you. Um, can, can you hear me still or, or are you or you're not hearing me now? We can hear you now. Okay. Uh, did you catch the portion where I, I mentioned on Lexington Avenue that we also broke up the panes of glass instead of being uh, five solid pieces of glass, they are now broken up into panes of glass, similar to the look that's at the second floor level? Hello? Jane? Are, are the members hearing me or, or am I just? I am hearing you. Okay. I think Jane is okay. frozen. Ah. Uh -huh. Jane, are you hearing? Jane just disappeared. So she'll rejoin. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Okay, so just, just to summarize, we, we pretty much reduced the- I would the wait, wait for the co-chair. Oh, sure, of course, very good. Probably has to come all the way back in again, so- Yeah, 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 yeah understood. Side if you could do me a favor, just let me know when she's back on because I, I can't okay. see her as a, as a, as a we'll let we'll let you know when she's back on. Thank you, Mr. Helper, and I appreciate that. Oh, here she is.
Awesome. Okay, she's back. Okay. Jane, you just have to confirm unmuting. Uh, if you keep freezing, Jane, you might want to turn off your video. That might help. Can you hear me, Saida? Yes, I can hear you now. Wonderful. We I don't know, know what happened. Okay. Um, can you still hear me, Saida? Yes, I can still hear you. Okay, thank you. I don't know what happened, no but problem. I lost the Zoom meeting. Okay, well, we have you back now, so. Is the applicant finished with his presentation? Uh, no, we waited I, for you. So Ted, you can go ahead and resume. Right, I, I finished off speaking about East, East 73rd Street, I apologize. And then I was just reiterating that on Lexington Avenue, instead of our doors being five large panes of glass on that side also, we broke those up with muntins uh, into smaller sections. So they would not look as large as, uh, they would not look as large massive panes of glass, but broken down panes of glass uh, similar to what's going on at the floor above at the second floor level. So we reflected the look there also uh, to essentially, uh, that was one of the things that appealed to the members of the commission. And we felt that it was, it was warranted to reflect that look at the first floor also on the Lexington Avenue side. Did we lose Jane again? Jane? I'm here. Can you hear okay. me? Yes. Yeah, I'm here. Try turning off your video. That might that might help with the sound. Are you talking to me or the yes. applicant? She has to be able to see, doesn't she? Oh. She can still see, but we won't be able to necessarily see her. But that might help with the, with the technical. The, uh, yeah. Okay. So you're talking to me, Said. I should turn. Yes, up. Jane. Yes. Oh. Let me see here, I'm going to stop. There you go, out. that's better. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Is the applicant, is that his presentation? Yes. Yeah, I, 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 I believe so. I just, I just went over the, the main portions that we had revised from our previous meeting uh, to address the items and, and comments and the concerns of the, the members of the commission. And basically you've broken up the, um, it was formerly single panes for all the openings along 73rd Street and you've changed them to um, divided lights to match the- Correct. The elevation at the second floor and the same for the Lexington Avenue elevation. That's, that's correct. And you've also, also made the two-story infill contextual. Correct, that's right. So and it's going to be made out of painted brick. That's correct, to match the Instead rest of the of building. Stucco. Yeah. Without, without any delineation to, you know, to emphasize the fact that it's separate. We, made it want, we, we, we agreed with the commission that it should be better and nicer looking as a, as a uniform building as opposed to it being broken down and broken up. You said earlier you were gonna make it a little darker. Is that correct or did I misunderstand you? No, just on the drawing, it looks darker so that you would know what the new part is, okay. that, the part that was affected. Okay. Uh, in, in addition, on the on the East 73rd Street side, we did raise the bulkhead or, or the brick on the commercial entry towards the west side of the building, just because we don't we need the full height of the windows at that point. So we did we did add a little bit more brick at, at that portion also.
Jane, are you there? Jane? Uh, David, I'm going to try calling Jane. I was going to suggest that I tried before, but I she didn't pick up. So let's try again. Uh, okay, David, I wasn't able to get her on the phone either, but we sent her the, the dial-in information. So we're going to. Well, in case Jane can't come back, uh, maybe I can ask somebody to step in for her. Um, maybe, Alita, can I ask you to uh, step in for Jane and write the resolutions? Um, uh, numbers one and three? Sure. Thank you. Happy to help. Thank you. So uh, up to you to uh, take it from here. Oh, you know, okay. The, pub the public yeah. and public and then the, um, the committee. Yeah, no, I know that. All right, so the presentation is done and we're ready to hear comments. Yes. 
Okay, great. So I see, um, is CP Clapper a member of the public? Yes. Let's Clapper. Okay. So uh, would you unmute him? And how do you prefer to be addressed? And please identify yourself for the record and your address. Uh, yes, I'm a resident of the city. Um, I'm also a uh, uh, economist, and uh, my main concern here is the uh, functionality change. Though it's it's pleasing visually to see the facades broken up. Uh, if this uh, goes through, will this be one? commercial uh, uh, unit that is going to be uh, occupied by one entity. And if that one entity is uh, not um, you know, rented out, um, that one uh, large entity, then the whole uh, uh, commercial front of the building will be uniformly uh, unoccupied, will be vacant. And I'm concerned about what that does in terms of the urban fabric of the, of, the, uh, of the building. It'll be essentially like a big box store that, that um, uh, is emptied out if that particular big box uh, company closes its operation instead of having a number of smaller units that will keep some variety and uh, vitality within the actual operation of the of, of the building. I believe that Ted could respond to that but I'd first like to ask you if you could be a bit more specific with your address. Uh, Oh, with my particular address? Yes. Okay, I am uh, actually in, in Washington Heights, but my uh, late uh, mother had uh, been uh, closer to this particular. You, you're welcome to speak here in any neighborhood or in any state or in any country. Okay. Okay. So you don't need to be an Upper East Side resident. We just need it for the record. Um, but let's just let's move on since we've uh, had some blank time. Um, Ted, would you be able to respond to is CP good right. CP's um, question about the space? I know that you have something in mind specifically. Of course, we actually do have a tenant. Farrell and Ball is vacating out of the space. Currently, there are two tenants, uh, or previously there were two tenants. One was Farrell and Ball, which was located at the west side of the building. And then the eastern three quarters of the building, first and second floors, were occupied by a restaurant. They, the new tenant is a restaurant tenant, and he is taking the entire first and second floors for his space. So it will be, it will be a two-story single tenant space. So we were going from a, a large one and a smaller two tenant to a single tenant in the building for the commercial areas. Okay. Are there any other questions from the or comments from the public? Um, I don't see any raised hands. Oh, there is. Oh, no, there aren't any raised hands, but it looks like Jane was able to rejoin. Um, no, I don't know what is wrong, everyone, but here I am again. Well, the far more able original chair, but thank you for the honor, David. And if it happens again, I'm here. Otherwise, I'm going to turn it back over to Jane. Oh, Alita, do you want to finish with this um, application? I, you've already started it. Sure. Um, I, we were just moving to, to going through the board. So since there are no additional comments oh. from the public, we would just turn to the board and go in alphabetical order. Saida, if you could just do that and unmute people as they come up. And Jane, if you wanna take it from here, that's fine too. And, and we'll work at the resolution after David and Jane, but- you didn't, uh, Jane, you didn't, you didn't miss anything. The only question, there's only one question, was it multi-tenant or single tenant and it's single tenant. Okay, let's yeah, go it's to... a restaurant, isn't it? It's a restaurant. Yes, yes. it's another restaurant. But well, I take... hope I don't lose anybody. Um, Saida, you could start with the board. Thank you, Alita. That was really helpful of you. My pleasure. Sure 
but we could start, um, Saida, with the board and start okay. with in, go in alphabetical order. Okay. Thank you. Elizabeth is unmuted. Uh, yes, uh, I think this is a considerable improvement. I didn't like what they did before. Uh, and I, I think that uh, they're certainly getting there. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm happy with the changes. Thank you. Uh, Gail, confirm and muting. Thank you. I agree with Elizabeth. I think you've been extremely sensitive and certainly very responsive to the comments from uh, our committee. And I think this is a vast improvement over the, uh, the last proposal. And I can support this application as it now stands. Thank you. Thank you. Elizabeth, I'm sorry, not Elizabeth. Michelle, confirm and muting. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, I too want to thank the applicant. You've been very responsive and um, I'm very pleased about that. However, I see a new element here and correct me if I'm wrong. Did you say that you are creating another door on 73rd Street to accommodate street service? No, those would be the same doors that we were proposing the previous time. We were just breaking the doors down with muntins into smaller sections. Can you point to those doors on the uh, on the screen? Sure, I'll go, please point to the, the doors with the muntins. To the, no, it's to the left of those, sorry. Yeah. That's, that's the main entry doors. The doors with the, with the broken down underneath, underneath the second floor area. You're talking there. about the center panel where That's you correct. have two yes. pieces of glass and then there are uh, divided lights on either side? Cor correct. Those those were there previously, except they were okay, all full fine. panels of glass. Now they're right. broken that, down. Now that's not what I was referring to. When you said that there was an entry, a new entry for street service, I, if you, as I face it, it's on my right, as, as you face the screen, if you go to the right, you see three panes of glass and then all the way the right again, go to the right again and you see a darkened doorway. That's, that's the residential, that's the residential residential entry. That was the one that was there before still. Okay, fine. So you so you have no new egress. This was in the original plan? Correct. 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 And and that is the door that is being re relocated from the 73rd Street side because it's an old, beautiful wrought iron uh, finished door. And we reincorporated it into the residential portion. OK, but let me just clarify one thing. Entry for service onto the street on 73rd Street. Is that a new concept even in your first plan or was that there for the old tenants? That was there previously, and that is there again. Okay, it was there previously. Correct, because they need they need two winds of egress at the first floor level. Okay, the, you know, I just to clarify why I'm questioning it is because I wanted to, I was concerned that this door was being created specifically for the open, you know, for the streets, the restaurant service on the streets, which may or may not become a permanent situation. The city is calling for it to be permanent, but the state is only calling for it to last a year. So I want to make sure that this is not a new creation to accommodate that. No, correct. Okay. Correct. That that's it. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate sure. it. Alita. Thank you. Yeah, Ted, thank you so much for coming back um, and, and redoing this and making it work so much better. My only comment really are those windows over on the far west side that don't uh, are not divided panes, divided lights, and they look like they just don't belong. They look like something in a, a Mid, not even mid-century, like a 1970s style house, maybe ranch house. So I'm just not, those three panes near the door, which is just to the east of the wrought iron door, mm -hmm. and that I have a little bit of trouble with. But other than that, I think it's a, a great improvement. Thank you. The, I think the only reason we didn't break those down was because on the floors above, there's nothing reflective of that, of that in that area. So we tried to be a little bit respectful of the area of, of the glass that's above that in that area. Yeah, it just looks like it's another building or something else rather than 
matching what's upstairs, it it doesn't look continuous with the um, design on the first floor, the ground level floor, and that's that's what's weird to me. Um, plus, they're not they're not copying the windows. I could see if it had, had moldings, which I guess would not be typical on the first floor, or, or even the double hung windows. They ju it just seems really out of place to me. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah? Hi. Um, I think Alita brings up a really interesting point that I hadn't thought about before. So are we thinking, are we prioritizing the streetscape from uh, the pedestrian's point of view or kind of the holistic look at the building? And I don't have an answer for that, um, something that I'm thinking about. Uh, but I just wanted to thank the applicant for coming back and for being responsive um, and embracing the comments of the committee. Um, and uh, I like the change to um, the infill. And, um, and I think that un unless there is um, that, that I, I lean toward approval, but I, I am listening for um, other thoughts about Alita's comment with regard to those first floor windows. Thank you. Thank you. Um, May, confirm and muting. Hi, thank you. I wanna thank the applicant for their thoughtful uh, implementation of the board's feedback and I don't have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Marco, confirm and muting. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have a couple of questions. I saw all the, the documents that sent it to us. Can, you, can I see the, the four and fifth or, or three or four floors, the floor plans? Yep, that's the following page. I'll go switch to the following page. Okay. So, okay. So the, the question is, you have only one means of egress. And uh, for the first floor and second floor, for the first and second, you say it's required. To have. For the residential fire, it's even more required to have two means of egress. And I don't see that you have to provide two means of egress because you relocate from Lexington Avenue to 73rd Street, and then you put it two entrance, and then you have the entrance for the basement, or I'm sorry, cellar. Right. So the issue is, um, I found it that a little bit, it's my concern that the functionality of the space, it has to be within the law. And I don't think in this case, this is one comment. The other comment that I made me concern is the first floor, I think you reach a very good level because it's commercial and going east toward the mid block, they are going to reduce the, the commercial intensity with the entrance, with the entrance with the, with the, to the cellar. But the second floor, it creates a little bit complications in the design. Right, because you try to imitate the uh, the third floor and the second floor, the third and the fourth floor, and then obviously the windows uh, in the in the section that you do the enlargement, uh, you try to differentiate. When in reality, I think it should be continuous, and it should mark the the, the, the that section, but not in the way that you mark it right there darker, but at the end of the day, probably will be the same color. It should have some different material to differentiate between that section and the rest of the building. Yes, the, before some fellow community members say you should match with with bricks, but uh, I find it very, a little bit troubling that, that section of the building. And the other parts, the other small parts, so I don't have no problems. But th that just made me feel a little bit uncomfortable in, the, in that section. 
because if you want to match, match the windows because that's the, 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 the reality. And then you never gonna match the, the bricks. The bricks is always you're gonna find a, diff, a different types of bricks. And you're never gonna match the existing bricks because it's impossible to obtain those bricks. And I'm not asking that you should try to match those bricks either because uh, it was hard. And also we had to differentiate what it was and we propose. I, I think that is a little bit troubling from my point of view. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Okay, public member Kimberly Selway. Hi, thank you. Um, I don't have anything additional to add um, based on comments from the other members of the committee, but I am, again, looking forward to hearing what both Jane and David have to say based on Alita's comments about the, the second door there on the 73rd Street side. But I think as of right now, I could approve this uh, application. Thank you. Um, we also have some non-committee members present. So Taina, confirm unmuting. Yep, oh, I'm okay, I have no questions. Okay. Thank you. And Barry Schneider, where did you go? Confirm unmuting, Barry. Okay, good evening and thank you. Um, following any comments by my fellow board members, I'd like to propose a approval of the application. Um, Barry, we still haven't heard from um, David Halpern or me, but thank you. We'll get to a resolution in a minute. David? I would say that um, there's nothing to love about this building and there's nothing, I guess, to hate about this building. Uh, it's sort of formulaic. Uh, in the way uh, the windows have been handled. Uh, I wished that that corner, that somebody had shown a little bit of innovation, uh, some interesting ideas, maybe even carrying out the glazing from the restaurant area up into that corner to make it something special and something different and something to make the building a little bit special. I don't have a problem with the windows at the former paint store. Uh, they're not floor to ceiling. They're sitting on a low brick wall. And I think that in terms of balancing the amount of uh, divided lights and the amount of non-divided lights, I think that uh, what's been done is okay. So my basic feeling about this thing is it's just okay. But because it's just okay, I'll support it. David, um, that's a pretty lukewarm support. Well, that's exactly the way I feel. Uh, well, I, you know, I feel that if it's lukewarm, um, I don't know. Well, not, not to, look, they've come a very long way from where they started. That's not a necessarily a reason to approve it. But I don't think what they've done uh, will harm the street. Uh, Maybe if there's a little bit of excitement behind the glass, uh, maybe, maybe if there's life within this building, uh, that will help it. Um, but, you know, sometimes uh, something that's not great is better than uh, something that's a less than not great. So uh, my feeling is that uh, it's okay and therefore I will support it. Okay. Um, we do have some more raised hands, Jane. Uh, Michelle raised her hand again, and so did CP. Okay, go ahead, both of them. Uh, okay, thank Michelle? you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm very pleased that the infill is being made to look like the rest of the building. I believe we actually asked that of the applicant, and that's why he came back to us with it. So rather not to turn his head around, spin spin his head 50 times, um, I think we should remember our last comments. So I'm very happy with that info. And as a matter of fact, would also like to just suggest that if you look at the windows adjoining it with the, with the um, it, they're not exactly the same with the two little drop down accents on, you know, on the other windows, if you could add those, I would be pleased too. I'm not one who believes that you should necessarily have a marked distinction 
function. I don't think it would add in any way architecturally to this. And I'm assuming that the only reason the bricks are outlined darker was to show us the infill, not necessarily because there's going to be an intentional effort to make the bricks darker. It, I have one more comment, but if you'll just confirm that that's the case. I will Tennessee. confirm that that is the case. That's correct. Because we we we, we wanted you to be able to see which, which was the new section and what was existing. Correct. Okay, that makes sense to me. As far as the comment about the windows, Alita's comment, I actually thought the same thing as she when I looked at it. Um, if the applicant felt that they could go back and make those divided lights, I would be very happy with that but I won't disapprove the application because of that, because I think you came a very long way. Can I have a comment about that? Or do you have to take it back to whomever? Um, we're gonna vote on what um, is presented in the application, Michelle. I know, Jane, we always do, but I would like his input. Jane, I do have a comment. My comment is that I didn't think these were discussions. I thought everybody had the opportunity to say their piece, and then we went on. Thank you, David. We've already heard from the applicant. So who else had their hand raised? Um, uh, CP, and also Marco raised his hand again. Okay, um, thank you. CP, confirm and muting. Uh, I agree with uh, Michelle about the, um, about the infill windows. It's the frame does not match the other ones. And another point to um, is that the design of the upper stories is not really reflected in that first story set of, of windows, those three uh, windows that uh, as Leo had, had, had mentioned. Uh, it would be more architecturally pleasing uh, to have some unity in the style of window treatment on the uh, first floor with what happens above it. Um, and um, it doesn't have to be the uh, double hung windows, but if it's broken up in a, say, a casement window sort of fashion, that might uh, present something that looks more authentically, uh, authentic to that, to that uh, period, uh, so that it's separated uh, in you know other ways, and um, and gives you the feeling that you're walking into a uh, or, or observing a historical facade on the first floor that echoes what's happening on the higher and the other uh, floors. Thank you, Saeed. Is there anyone else? I have one more comment. Yes, we have Marco. Oh, oh, let's go to Marco first, David. Is that okay? Yes. And I have a comment as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm going to recommend. Uh, first of all, I said I'm going to disapprove this application because they need to have a, a two means of egress from the from the uh, residential park, and so that means they have to provide another another door in the in the facade. This, so it's going to change the 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 proposed idea of the of the exit of the I'm sorry of the facade because they need one more door so and I think something that, that you have to be aware I review your application your application you self certify this application and the DOV never gonna review that and I think it's wrong and this is why I'm going to uh, allow to disapprove this application thank you thank you um, thank you May I have to respond uh, no, to that? No, no, we're just going to go to um, David okay. Halpern again. Thank you. I think the bottom line is that this is a modest building. It's not a great building. It's in uh, the historic district. So we wound up being part of the historic district. Uh, you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. And uh, I think what they did is uh, appropriate within the scope of what we've asked them to do and within the opportunities that perhaps this building presented. And as I said earlier, I think it came a long ways. It doesn't mean I have to love it. Uh, and I go with what I said originally. Uh, it's okay, and because it's okay, I will support it. I realize, Thank you. I realize there are a lot of details like the sills of the windows and so on, 
but uh, there's only so far I think that we can go and the rest is up to the commission. Thank you, David. I want to echo what David has just said. The applicant has come back to us. This is the third time the applicant has come back to us. They've listened to all of our comments. They've made adjustments to the front elevation on Lexington to the side elevation by breaking up the sheets of glass. The infill, I'm opposed kind of to the infill. We're losing the charming fence that was at the top of the second floor. But I think it's a time for us to either approve or disapprove, and I will also vote to approve. It's not perfect, but they've really gone the extra mile, which a lot of applicants don't do by coming back to us with a third redesign. So I think we're ready for a resolution. I think Barry was going to propose a resolution. Barry, are you still there? He's, I'm, yes, I'm here. Yes, uh, I move to approve the application. I'm just waiting for a second. 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 So I think <clears throat> we can go to a vote. One. Oh, there's Aida. Let me share my screen here. Okay, Elizabeth Ashby. Yes. Gail Barron. Yes. Michelle Birnbaum. Yes. Alita Camp. Yes. Sarah Chu. Yes. May Malik. Yes. Marco. No. Uh, Kimberly Selway. Yes. Taina Barrero? Yes. And Barry Schneider? Yes. Uh, Jane Partial? Yes. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's okay. Maybe it is yes. Okay. Maybe it is yes. Thank you. All right. We have. Thank you, Saida. And thank you to the applicant. It's very rare that we have an applicant come back for a third time trying to incorporate our points of view. So many thanks. Thank you very much. We appreciate your, you know, uh, approving our, our proposal. We appreciated your comments. Uh, we feel that it was a better design when we came back also. So thank you very much for your assistance here. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. And the next application is 118 East 62nd Street, Upper East Side Historic District, Kevin Dakin, architect, an Italian aid style, House designed by Robert Mook, originally constructed in 1869-79 with a Beaux-Arts style facade, designed by Carrera and Hastings and reconstructed in 1919. Application is to replace the existing front house fence at three foot six inches with a five foot two inch fence and an additional four inch stone base fence. And uh, is the architect here? Uh, the, the architect is not, but the homeowner is. Marina is unmuted, um, and you have the capability to share your screen whenever you're ready. Uh, we cannot hear you. Okay, good evening. There you go. Good evening. I'm Marina Vassarelli, and I reside at 118 East 62nd Street, and thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to come in front of all of you to present my request to... Um, replace my existing fence to a higher fence with a stone curb. Thank you. So um, first of all, I wanted to show um, where I did the posting prior to um, June 12, July 12. So the posting were being distributed and posted between amount of, within the parameter of 60, Street to 63rd Street and between Madison to 3rd Avenue. They were either posted in the um, post or being um, this slip between um, underneath residents that have a um, mailbox or with the doorman. Can you hear me? We can yeah. hear you. Oh, okay, sorry. And um, 
Okay, and this is the first slide. And and this the one one eight East sixty second Street is the um Bozart building style building in that's in the middle of these three building is is this one um we're still seeing the flyer map oh you're still seeing the flyer yeah oh um excuse me okay sorry no problem sorry are you still seeing the flyer yeah yes How about now? Uh, no, now you're, you're, you're not sharing at all. Oh, okay. Oh, hold on. Hold on one second. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, maybe I should close the flyer, right? Yes. Is the screen sharing? Yeah, the screen is sharing, but I'm sharing the flyer. Okay. Flyer? Uh, David, I'm wondering if um, the applicant should come back and have the architect present. Um, well, it's very unusual for the owner to do the presentation. And if we're going to be having problems with screen sharing, uh, um, it's not going to be fair to those of us who are here. Okay, I'm, I'm very sorry. Let, uh, here's the, here is the, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. That's the... Are you seeing yourselves? Yeah, if you'd like, I can. Yeah, can you please say that? Okay. okay. Maybe you can share the screen. Uh, yeah. no, no, I think Saida, you could you could run the slides because yes, you I'll, have them I'll already. Do that. Oh, you, I think you got it. Oh, I got on. it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I apologize. I'm very sorry. Okay. And 118 East 62nd Street is the Buzard building, Buzard style building in the middle that is um this one. Okay. close. I need to move to the second slide. Okay, just page down. Okay. Okay. Um, this is um, the present. This is where the cur the location. The map on the left side shows that it the house is located in the southern portion of the east side historical district, and then the map on the right side is taken from the New York Public Library digital collection for the period of 1884 to 1936. And in this block, it started out as a road of similar looking row house. And please um, stop me if um, anyone have any question, please. We know what to do. We will do what is okay. necessary. Okay, thank please you. Please just move it along. Yeah. A problem is okay. Okay. Yeah, I went too far. Okay. And this is the con street streetscape contest. Okay. I want the first photo on the left is looking east on East 62nd Street. And then um, the middle photo is um, 118, which is um, next to a Sorry, David, thank you. A big residential building. And then um, the third picture is looking west on East 62nd Street. And you can also see that at the corner, there is also a big building that is the 555 Park Avenue. And this is also another um, 
photo of looking east and at the address between 134 through 120-22 East 62nd Street. And that 120-22 is a big residential um, building and they have changed it at, um, from the row house. And on this street, you can see that um, there are fences, um, low and high fences on this block. It's a typical, um, having low and high fences is quite typical on this block. And this house was originally constructed in 1869 to 70. And it was designed by um, Robert Mood. And then the facade was later changed to the current Bruzat style in 1990. And there was no um, a rear iron work presented in, during this period. And currently, okay, this is the current condition um, this is the condition when the district was designated um, to be the historical, this, the block was designated to be the historical district. And then right now there are three, house, three um, brownstone between two big building. You can see that the big building here, 120, dash 22, and then this is the um, 555 Park Avenue. Only three um, townhouses um, between these two big buildings. And this slide shows the current condition of 118 E62nd Street. Um, the current three feet six, inches um, fence was approved um, back in 2000. Um, and you can see that because there's no stone curb, um, the iron has been rotten because of the um, sidewalk salt and also for the dog urine. And that's why I'm requesting it um, to add a four inch stone base. So um, this will not happen again. And also it's our opinion that, okay, because this is a five story Boza style house and a taller fence will enhance the look of the building. And in the subsequent slides, I will show you examples of it. Okay, this is also the current condition um, of it. And then next door on 114 and 116, they have lower fence, but they all have the stone curb um, to protect the fence. So their base didn't get um, rotten over time. And this is the proposed fence that um, I'm presenting in, to the committee member. It's a simple picket fence and it will be put into the same area way. And the base, there will be a four inch bluestone curb height so it can protect the fence. And then also um, the actual fence will be increased from three feet, six inches to five feet, two inches. One is to um, mainly, it will help to enhance the security for um, package delivery and also on, on the day-to-day -day basis because the current fence is very low frequently. Um, any visitors, they will just put their hand over the fence and then open the door and walk in front of the door. So um, frequently, okay, when we open the door, um, the individual or is already um, in front of the main entrance instead of behind the fence.
Uh, Marina, I think we lost you. No, I can't oh, talk. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. No, we you can lost. Hear you. No, you're you're fine. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm sorry. And this vote, this slide shows that the precedent for um, tall offense with the same Beaux-Arts um, facade fa style. This is located on 133 E 62nd Street, which is diagonally across 118 E 62nd Street. It's quite traditional. Um, to have tall fences for this style of houses. This, um, the picture on the left was taken um, in 1915. And then at that time, it appears that there's a lower fence. And then subsequently, um, it was replaced with a high fence. And this is, um, located again on the same block at 134 E 62nd Street. They, they are part of the original row house. And they also have a lower fence back in um, around the 1940s. And then now they have, have a, they, the um, landmark commission have approved and then they have installed a five feet, nine inches fence. And this is another example. It's located at 124 East 62nd Street. And they also um, has a, they, in the old days, they have a low fence and then subsequently they replace it um, with a six feet, four inches fence. And both 124, and 118 are uh, on the left side and one is on the right side of the big, um, bigger um, residential building. And this is another example of a Beaux-Arts style building with high fence. And this is located on, on, one, on 11 E 62nd Street. In, so um, traditionally, it appears that, okay, higher fences um, is attractive for this style of the building. And this fence looks to, to be very tall. I don't know the exact height, but we can see that the gentleman, um, by where the gentleman was standing, and he only come to like one third of the fence. So that is a very high fence and that's located on 62nd Street um, between Fifth Avenue and Madison Avenue. This shows that historically the Bill's Eye Art style building has tall fences and which is still today. And this is another example that um, it's for the building located at 128 E 74th Street. And they received um, landmark staff approval for a tall fence back in 2003. So, and I'm very sorry about, um, at the beginning I was having a little bit problem manipulating um, maneuvering the slides. And is this your presentation? Pardon? Yeah, this um this is um my presentation. Okay, thank and, you. Thank you very much. Okay. So we'll go to the public. Are there any comments from the public? Saida, do you see anybody? I don't see any raised hands. Uh, just as a reminder, you can go to the participants button at the bottom of your, or the reactions button at the bottom of your screen, excuse me, and select the raise hand feature. OK, 
Okay, so let's go to the. Oh, I do see one. Um, oh. CP, confirm see somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I noticed that on one of the examples of the tall fence, uh, there were uh, two pillars, two columns that uh, framed the entrance. Um, and it, in more in keeping with the, you know, if you head um, uh, down, actually, I think it was in um, yeah, this one. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I was I was thinking uh, more of the um, further down. Mr. Clapper, let me just say that we're not here to redesign. Okay, we're only right, here okay. to decide right, whether it's saying, appropriate. No. We're we're only here to decide whether it's appropriate or not. Okay. So um, he's not about to put in columns. Okay, so then, um, it, just um, in terms of the um, style of the high fence. Uh, you know, I, I certainly, you know, agree that functionally uh, having that curb uh, helps immensely, but um, there comes a point where the style of the fence does not um, coordinate with the style of the building. And that was the one that's, uh, that's presented on that um, uh, screen with the car in front of it has um the two columns, but I, I understand that you, you Well, if you want to show us the metal, if you want to, Mr. That. Clapper, if you're talking about the metal screen, metal fence, that's one thing. Right. So if I interrupted you inappropriately, I apologize. So if you want to talk about the metal fence, that's fine. Yeah, it, it's just um, the uninterruptedness of the metal fence that um, is, I think, not totally in keeping with the Beaux-Arts uh, approach. Thank you. So now we'll go to the committee. Are you going in reverse order? In reverse order, please. Okay. You know, I always like to start with Marco. Yes, Mar <laughs> Marco, you're unmuted. Thank you, David. Um, first of all, this is no standard posting for the community board. Uh, secondly, uh, I'm not much fan of high fence, but we have precedents that we approve. Well, I don't see more in detail the, the, the fence to make a better judgment. Uh, for instance, in the style. So it's very limited the design that doesn't allow me to have a clear picture of your intentions. The high probably I am in agreement, but the style doesn't tell me much. And, um, Yes, you need some repairs, absolutely, no doubt. You have to repair that. And finally, um, how the airway that you are creating, how deep is that? Oh, it's, um, it shows in this slide, it's um, around five feet, um, 10 inches. How many, how many feet you said? Um, five, five feet, 10 inches, it's right here. Okay, yeah, 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 thank you, I saw that. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think you have enough, uh, enough room. Uh, yes, you, you're building a setback, but I don't have that information either. But in the event that you encourage that the, the public way, you're required to have another application. So uh, in order to make, uh, good judgment, I will need more information about your building in relation with the lot line. So, and then with you propose, uh, uh, you propose airway. Yes, I think I saw in the, in, in, the, in the Department of City Planning, yes, you have some space, but I don't think you have uh, almost six feet. But since I don't have nothing concrete, so I would like to see more information about that. Thank um, you. It would definitely be, within the identical area. Um, I am not asking any um, intrusion or any additional stretching out to the street. That will be totally inappropriate. I agree with you, sir. Thank you, David. You're welcome. May, confirm and muting. Hi, thank you. Um, I think I just need a little bit more time to sit with this one. It's I, I feel like there's some information that I don't have and I'm not quite yet certain what the questions are. I'm going to sit back and listen to the comments and questions and feedback from my colleagues. 
Thank you. Sarah, confirm unmuting. Hi. Um, so first, I'd like to thank the applicant for uh, for her attention to posting um, this application. I think that uh, that's laudable. And um, thank you very much for uh, considering the community board's request. Um, I, I, I think the, the four inch uh, cement curb makes complete sense. And what I'm struggling with is that I, and, and I don't have um, any comments on the design of the fence, but with regard to the height of the fence, I'm struggling with the applicant's desire for privacy and security, which is a very real thing. And, um, and the balance with the other fencing on the block, which is lower and more, um, more akin to the current height of the present fence. And so um, I'm, I'm not sure how I feel uh, about the two different heights because I, I do appreciate uh, the desire for privacy and security. And so um, I will listen to my colleagues who um, on that particular topic. So thank you. Thank you. Alita, confirm and muting. Thank you. Um, I'm okay with the bluestone bottom. I'm not so okay with the fence. I think the design is so industrial or commercial looking. It has no character that reflects the beautiful facade of your house and other houses on the street. So I don't think the design stands up to the architecture of the house. I'm also, well, I do understand security. Um, I am a little concerned about the fence in front of the house because the whole expanse of fence running across the house facade, it, it looks like like a fence around almost a parking lot or, or a structure that is not residential. Um, the design, the height, the unbrokenness, it doesn't suit the character of the, of the neighborhood. It doesn't give a sense of history. It seems to only be about security. So I would have to say that at this point, subject to what I learned from my colleagues' questions and comments, I would have to, um, I can't approve this right now. But I do very much appreciate your coming here and spending the time. Um, you did give it a lot of attention and thought to the detail of other houses in the neighborhood. So thank you for that. Thank you. <coughs> May I respond or is it inappropriate? Uh, you can respond with, uh, you know, with my uh, approval, so to speak, but yes, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, the first is that um, currently there are three houses within um, the block between on 62nd Street between Lexington and Park. And please don't repeat what you've already told us. Oh, oh, oh. If you have something new to tell us, you're welcome to respond. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. On the design of the fence, and I was told that, um, that um, the landmark prefer simple fences not elaborate fences. That's why, okay, um, we chose this design. So it will, um, so the fence will not be um, standing out that people will look at the house instead of the fence. That's the only reason, okay, um, we decided to pick this simple, simple fence that, um, that's all. Yes, thank you. Michelle? Yeah, thank you. Um, I have uh, I have concerns about the height. I'm fully in favor of you putting in the four inch blue, sto blue stone, you know, addition, and that would add to the height, your original height of three feet six inches. So that would make it three foot ten inches. You're looking for an overall height of five two, so that is a significant increase in height. Uh, a couple of points. I think it's too high, and especially because of its proximity to the front door and because of the 
um, small depth of the area way. I think it pushes it right up until the house and I, it makes it disproportionate, even though I fully understand your security concerns. But from an aesthetic point of view, I don't think it's uh, favorable. I'm pleased that you're painting it black. I think that's a very big improvement from what you have, which raises me to a question. Uh, are you gonna be painting the other ironwork on the building black as well? Or are you leaving that the way it is? I will paint all of them black, so to be uniform. Yeah, that sounds good. Going to the aesthetics of the fence, um, I agree. It's a little on the commercial side. I appreciate your sensitivity not to want to make it ornate, uh, not to want to call too much attention to it. But I suspect there is... Um, some kind of a compromise somewhere in between. And maybe this could um, more fully come in line with the ironwork on the rest of the building. Can you quickly and easily go to a slide of the entire front facade so we could see that ironwork and refresh our memory? Of course. Okay, I'll give, I'll, I'll go. It's You're 118, so. Yeah, this is the, uh, yeah. This yeah, is the current it, design. What you're pointing to is your current fencing. Yes, yes. Okay, well, that painted black to me would be, you know, just fine, raised on a four inch uh, bluestone um, border. So, in its current form, I couldn't approve this application, both for proportion and for design, but I hope you can make that, those amends depending on what the rest of my colleagues say and come back to us. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate your presentation. Thank you. Gail, confirm a meeting. Thank you. You know, I agree with my colleagues, certainly having the curb raised to prevent erosion, no issue at all. But as I look at the fence, I too have issues with the height. And I do think that the design is very commercial, really rather pedestrian. I am certainly um, appreciate your desire to not have a fence that's obtrusive, but I think it really, if you look at the existing fence, as Michelle pointed out, and you had a fence like that, even if it were a little higher than uh, what you're requesting, I think that that would work fine. But there's no reason that you can't have a fence that has some interest in it, which is compatible with, with your beautiful building. But I do think that given the area way and the design of the new fence, that rather than uh, be unobtrusive, I think it will become very obtrusive because it just will not mesh with uh, the architecture. So I do have concerns, particularly with the height and with the design. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Is, uh, I think you're, you're getting there, but you're not there. Uh, and I agree with my colleagues. I, I do think you should have a, a simple fence, not one of these floral arrangements that seem to be on the block. But I, I think that there is something between what you have and a very simple but more interesting fence uh, than you propose. And I, I think... Um, it does need a little less height as well. I understand, and I, I, I think I could certainly support anything that provides the security you want, but I don't think you have to go to the height. I mean, that would keep out giants. So uh, I think you can re uh, reduce the height a little bit, add some interest, and I'm glad you're painting it black. Uh, and I, I do think you're very near but you're not there yet. Thank you. 
Thank you. Kimberly, confirm and muting. Thank you, Saida. Um, I, my opinion echoes you know, many of the points that my colleagues here have made, so won't belabor the point. From my perspective, it's less about the height and more about the actual design not being in keeping with the rest of the building. Um, but I do appreciate the applicant walking us through all of this and to also echo what Sarah said about making sure that there were postings around in the neighborhood. That's greatly appreciated. May I ask a question? What's the question? Um, so um, based on what I just heard, um, the committee member prefer my current design. You can infer as you choose from what you've heard. Oh, okay. No, okay, okay. Because I love my current design too. But as I said, I was, I was um, told you that may, it's you may have been misinformed. Oh, okay. Uh, let me say only one thing of what I was going to say later. Simple does not mean that there's no visual delight to it. The current <laughs> fence has a little bit of visual delight. Your proposed fence has none. Okay, thank you. Okay, Barry, you are next. Yeah, and very briefly, I, I concur with the, Paul's, Paul's observation. The, the fence lacks character and in a historic district in a uh, landmark designated area, it should have character. Uh, also, the fence height, yeah, I, I could probably live with it, but if you're going to make one change, you might as well consider making another change. And in this essence, those are my comments. And thank you again for the very detailed presentation. Thank you, Mary. Taina? Um, I have no comments or questions. I think it's been pretty well summarized. So thank you. Uh, Jane and David. Oh. Jane, confirm and muting. Oh, thank you. I'm going to have to um, oppose the application. Many thanks, Aida. David? You're muted. You have to confirm a meeting, David. How did I wind up being muted? I don't know. That wasn't nice of you, Saida. <laughs> In any event, uh, I will not uh, support the application either. As I mentioned initially, there is no visual delight to the fence. Uh, I also think it's too tall. Uh, I don't have a problem with the depth of the uh, area way many homes uh, in New York have that. Uh, I don't think that's the real issue, but I do think the fence overall is now five to six inches high. That's as tall as a person. Uh, and I think it's, uh, it's no longer an issue of security. It's an issue of being off-putting. And I don't want a fence that's off-putting. Um, the curve that's shown is continuous. Now that may just be a mistake in the drawing, but uh, you can't step over the curve. Uh, you've got to be able to take a wheelchair right through, for example. So that may be a mistake in the drawing and maybe it wasn't meant, but it's a very bad, well, you can see the curve goes right through. And last but not least, uh, when you come back, I think it would be uh, would behoove you to, and your architect, to show us some details uh, so we have a better idea of how the fence is put together. This is very abstract. It's just a very simple line drawing. In and of itself, that line drawing tells us the fence is not very attractive. But uh, if you were going to make the case for it, uh, some details might have been helpful. So I can't support it for the reasons I've stated. Uh, I think you've heard a lot that uh, could inform you about coming back. Uh, landmarks will also give you some informal consultation if you want to go visit them uh, mm -hmm. before you come back to us again. Um, may I speak? Yes. Um, actually, the, um, the lady, Linia, Liana Pola at the landmark has been extremely helpful to me. And also, I also have to say that Zeta Harrigan um, at the community board eight was also extremely helpful. And I wanted to officially thank both of them. And yeah, so I have been working with Liani Polak um, um, 
quite intensively on on this. Yeah. Well, I think that some of the comments you've heard tonight need to go back to her. Yeah. And um, I think you've heard what we've had to say. Mm -hmm. uh, you told us that you loved your current fence and you saw that we liked your current fence better, a lot better than your proposed fence. Mm -hmm. I think there are some lessons in that. Um, are there yeah. any um, preferable, um, acceptable think, height? I think that you've got to come back and make the judgment call. I think we all feel at five foot six inches, I won't say all, but many of us feel at five foot six inches, it's too tall. Uh, you're gonna have to decide on what the right proportion is. And if you, whatever you say it is, when you come back next time, you're gonna to have to make the case for it. And it's gonna to have to relate to some of the things that you've heard tonight uh, about uh, whether the security should govern or whether the visual attractiveness of the fence should govern how the four fence proportions in relation to the building. These are all things that uh, you've heard tonight and we can't tell you what to do. We can only reflect on what you've done. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. David, we have Michelle's hand raised. Yes, Michelle. Move to disapprove as presented. Thank you. Second. Saida, please call the roll. One second while I unmute everyone. And share my screen. Okay, in reverse order, Marco? No. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes means no, okay. Yes means no. Okay, okay. thank you. May? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Alita? Yes. Michelle? Yes. Gail? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. Kimberly? Yes. Barry? Yes. Taina? Yes. Unanimous disapproval. I didn't vote yet. Yeah. Oh, I'm so <laughs> sorry. sorry. Yes. Jane, did you vote? I'm voting yes as well. Thank you. Okay, so it's back to you, Jane. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we're now going to go to 945 Madison Avenue, the Upper East Side Historic District, the Frick Museum at the Whitney Museum, that's cute, uh, formerly the Metropolitan Museum. Application is to continue to display vinyl graphics on the facade of the building at 945 Madison Avenue. I just wondered who's presenting for the applicant. Uh, oh. Luci one See. second. Luciano, confirm a muting. Hi, yes, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Maybe you and can just spell your name, I'm sorry, just so I can. Sure, Luciano Johnson. L oh, I see, okay. Thank you so much. Okay, you can go ahead. Sure. Uh, let me just share screen here. Is that working for everyone? Yes. yes. Great. Uh, so good evening. Thank you all for taking the time to review our project. Uh, as I said, my name is Luciano Johnson. I'm here with my colleague Elizabeth Daly on behalf of the Frick Collection. We're applying for a permit uh, to continue displaying uh, vinyl decals on the front of 945 Madison, uh, what we call Frick Madison, in the incredible building designed by Marcel Breuer. The decals were approved by LPC in January for short term. Uh, the graphics themselves were designed by Pentagram. We collaborated with the partners, Michael Barut and Abbott Miller, who led that project. Just a quick, quick agenda, which is uh, no different than the others we've seen. Uh, I'm gonna summarize this. Um, if, you, if you need the time to read it, please feel free. But 
Essentially, in this presentation, I'm going to highlight the graphics that we have currently on display and are asking to keep up for our time at Frick Madison. I want to explain why we think uh, it's important to keep these up. Summarizing what it says here, we are the third museum in six years to occupy the building. I think the introduction kind of pointed that out. And we think the graphics help distinguish us from our peers. Secondly, we want to make sure that the public understands that this is an active site of cultural importance and they are welcome to take advantage of that opportunity to see our collection in this new space. Uh, we believe taking the graphics down at this time sends a potentially confusing message about our status. Uh, and lastly, taking this down now misses on the opportunity to identify the museum to residents and visitors uh, as the city is reopening and people are starting to feel more comfortable being out and about in the city. So it's fairly self-explanatory, I'm sure, most of you, if not all of you, know this building well. Uh, the location is 945 Madison on the corner of 75th Street, lot number 50. These uh, are shots of the building prior to our occupancy with some bars highlighting the areas where the graphics are installed. It doesn't show clearly the graphic in the sunken garden, which you can't see from street level. Here is a southeast facing view of the whole, uh, sorry, I'm skipped ahead in my, uh, this is, it is a southeast facing view, um, showing uh, the, oh, I am the right one, apologies. Uh, the ground level businesses and residential buildings uh, that are adjacent to Frick Madison. One of the positives we think of having a museum on the block is the potential for attracting customers to these existing businesses. And then here we have a more detailed view of the entrance to the building. So you can see here the sign above the transom in combination with the Frick. And this is from the Sunken Garden looking north, uh, northeast really. And you can see that this you can see once you come upon the building or if you're in the garden itself. And I'm sorry that's cut off on top. Um, but I will try to walk you through. Uh, the letters are approximately six feet in height. The word Frick is about 26 feet across and Madison stretches about 45 feet across. The transom is seven feet across, 11 inches high. And you can see the last glass panel is left empty. Um, and the last two on the, on the uh, street level floor. These are the colors uh, represented. It's pretty much white, uh, a standard white, um, and this orange, which uh, was Pentagram's design for our branding. Um, they're the only colors on the vinyl. The vinyl decals are applied externally on the window. They have a 1 32nd uh, inch depth, and they are easily removable when the time comes. They're no different than any, any other graphics like this that you've seen around the city. They were installed and will be removed by when the time comes top-notch graphics. Um, so here just saying that um, they, they may require us to um, fix them at times uh, due to weathering. We have the benefit that this is under an overhang. So the weathering is pretty minimal, but it could happen. Um, it could happen with cleaning. It could happen you know, by, by just uh, natural wear and tear. And we are seeking to keep these up until the end of our tenure, uh, end of our lease, uh, August 11th, 2023. And that's all I have for you. Well, thank you very much. Saeed, is there anyone from the public present who wishes uh, to speak? We don't have any raised hands. Just as a reminder, you can go to the reactions button at the bottom of your screen and select the raise hand feature. If we don't, Saida, we can go to the committee and this time in alphabetical order. Okay, Thank Elizabeth? Uh, yes, uh, am I correct that the, the photographs show the exact size that's there? Yes, this is that, currently- Is involved. that the correct size? That's correct. This is, this is currently what it looks like at the building. And this is the size it's going to be? Correct. We wish to continue displaying it as is with the original design. Yeah, but you're changing the color. We are not. No, we're, we're not changing the color. We're just uh, wishing to extend this as is. Oh. Well, 
I think um, it's about three times too big, uh, and I, I'm afraid I really cannot support this. Thank you, Elizabeth. Gail? I have some concerns about the size as well, but I also am appreciative of the need to make sure, particularly as we're trying to attract visitors back to, uh, to the city to have the wayfaring to uh, find it. So I'm going to um, think about this for a bit. Thank you. Michelle? Yeah. Um... Because the, the word Madison is below ground and not visible from the street, I don't know why you need it. Uh, the point is you're calling it the Frick. I'd like to point out that you wouldn't need this at all if you weren't doing what you're doing to the old Frick. <laughs> but that, I, could, I couldn't help but interject that. Not a happy camper. Um, so at the very least, I would like to see the Madison removed. I don't think you need it. And again, give me the dimensions of these of these letters. Sure. Well, the, the title uh, of what we're calling the building is Frick Madison. So that would be the complete title. But the dimensions of the letters are, let me just bring you back to that page. Sorry. Uh, so it's about six feet tall um, with the Frick part being about 26 feet across. Uh, and the Madison part is about 45 feet across. And that's partly because those windows are so large and the building does overhang that. Yeah, I, I, I remain, even I'm looking at it now, I don't, I don't think you need the Madison. And you confused me, you, sir, you showed us an orange color, but the lettering appears to be white. Is the lettering white? What does this orange have to do with it? The orange is the is the uh, identifying the building as 945 above the transom of the doors in this shot. Oh, I see. OK, so there's there's an address on that. It just says 945. That's all it says. Correct. 945. So this built. So it never had an address there before. Uh, I don't believe you know what I don't recall. Let me go back to one of those images. I blocked it out. I, I don't think that it was on there. I'll have to confirm I don't remember that. an address there either. And what I'm hoping is maybe you can eliminate that. And if you wanted to put an address, to put it on the signboard where you're announcing the exhibition, just put it on there saying 945 uh, Madison, Madison. I don't see any need for it above the door. So with those two elements that I'm not really pleased about, I would say I would have to disapprove as presented. Thank you. Thank you. Alita? Thank you. I agree with Michelle. The 945, aside from the fact that the orange is a glaring discrepancy with the muted tones of the building, um, it, it never needed an address for the Whitney or the Met Breuer, which actually was an offshoot of the Met, and so people deservedly needed to know which which branch they were going to. The Frick is there because it's not able to be where it is. So I don't think you need that. I certainly don't think you needed an orange. And I'd have to agree that there's no reason for the Madison below. And um, I'm not as troubled with the size, but if you're going to work on it, I would say making it smaller. And especially when you have the signboard, which I assume says Frick someplace on it, people know by the time they get there where they are. So I certainly would urge you to take down that address. So thank you. Lita, uh, David, we have a raised hand from a member of the public. Would you like me to pause or? Sure, and let's take the public. Okay, CP confirm unmuting. Well, actually it's Jane's. Uh... <laughs> it's okay, David, I'm ceding to you for the moment. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> um, with regards to the decal size, since you're viewing it from the street, it would make more sense to cut the dimension of the signage uh, in half so that you have Frick Madison all at that street level, visible level. It still would be large, 
but it would put both Frick and Madison viewable to the left of the doors. Thank you. Okay. May I comment on that? Sure. Um, briefly. Sure. Uh, so the idea is to entice people to walk forward and then the Madison is revealed once one comes upon the sunken garden. So I agree that there's a, there's a logical idea of seeing the Frick Madison more visible on top, but there's there's an idea of kind of a teaser, if you will, of, of drawing people into the building to look closer who might not know what the Frick is. Sarah? Hi. Um, so for me, uh, I think that this is an easy application. Uh, the signage was previously approved by LPC and, um, and the applicant is simply asking to extend it for a period of time until the, um, with the idea that this, uh, the signage is temporary and that it is um, meant to sig simply signal the home of the Frick's artwork until their building is um, completed. Um, I, I, I guess I feel like the, uh, if you take a look at the building as a whole, that it's a large brutalist structure and the, the Frick just peeks out and so you can see it from the street and it, um, and you don't even see the whole Frick um, word that, um, and so I think it does do what it's designed to do by bringing people in and bringing them closer. Um, I think that um, the fact that the Madison is not seen from the street, um, in addition to luring people in that from the sunken garden, it creates a holistic, um, view of the signage and and it also has the benefit of not having everything um on the street in um given the size of the signage um and and i, I also think that this is a nice way of of creating um a signal to the public about where the frick madison is given the fact that, um, that it's temporary in nature, it doesn't impose or carve into or create any additional structure on the original Frick building. Uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, um, on the Met Brower building. And so, um, so I, so I, I, so I think it, it's easy for me to look at this application and be able to support it. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, May, confirm and muting. Thank you. Um, I, I, I appreciate the comments that have been made by um, many of my colleagues so far, but I, I don't have any major concerns with what's been proposed. I actually think the decal in terms of the size and the font is not only accessible, but it's quite bold. I really like it. Um, so I, I, yeah, I don't have any major concerns and uh, I don't have any questions either. Thank you. Thank you. Marco, confirm a meeting. Thank you. Um, let me ask again the, the questions. It, this is, uh, they asked me for an extension. Is that correct? So it's already, in the in the in the building, that's correct. Well, so honestly, it's very hard to disapprove something that we already approved. Um, and we I didn't approve it. The commission approved it. Ah, the commission approved it. Well, oh, okay. Now it changed. Thank you, uh, for that. Well, I, I think I'm still thinking that now that the Madison, that you don't need it, and probably the letters week probably too big, too excessive. And um, I'm thinking in the, for the rest. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you. Um, I'd like to echo Sarah's comments. I think given the aesthetics of this building and the fact that the signage is intended to be temporary and the fact that we you know, wanna promote people visiting our museums, even if it's at this temporary location, I can support this application. I just one question for Jane and David. 
is the reason that this became a matter that came to us is just the the length of the uh, time that this these decals would be up on the building? Is there a different reason that it was initially approved at a staff level and then now it's coming to us? I think maybe David has a better answer, but I think it's because the extension will last until August 11th, 2023, when the Frick will then return to its um, remodeled home on 70th Street. Got it, okay. Just curious, thank you. Taina? Thank you. Um, yeah, I would just echo what Sarah said in May. I, I'm inclined to be supportive. I think that um, I'm just particularly sensitive at this time. I think as we're trying to grow tourism in the area and get people to museums and to the extent that there is, you know, maybe for us that, you know, are in the neighborhood is no confusion about what's there. I think, you know, we have tourists visiting that where there may be confusion. So I think, um, especially because it's temporary and it sort of already exists, I'm inclined to support. Thank you so much. Barry? Yes, as <clears throat> in three words, as Sarah nailed it. I approve of the application. Thank you, Barry. David? I'm gonna recuse myself because I oppose this formally twice on behalf of two community groups. And of course we won the first time to keep the frick out of the garden. We lost the second time. And uh, I gather that I'm not the only one who thinks that what's going to be built is going to be inappropriate. However, with that said, uh, I'll give you two points of view. Uh, if this were the modern, uh, I'd feel absolutely right about the design, uh, the font, the size, I think it works quite well. On the other hand, it's not evocative at all of the trick and uh, would have been interesting if uh, the designers kind of could have come up with a way of doing something that was both appropriate to the building and somehow evocative of what the Frick Collection, which is the true name, uh, what the Frick Collection was all about or is all about. So you have my mixed message and I'm recusing myself. Thank you, David. Um, a couple of comments on my part. I, of course, oppose the enlargement of the Frick Museum. I do feel it was very amusing to hear the architects say want to entice people to walk forward. As you know, you need an online reservation to um, get into the Frick Madison. The other thing I um, wanted to point out is that there has been, I mean, worldwide publicity about the magnificence of the collection within the Frick Madison, how heavenly some of the paintings look within the simplicity of the absolutely outstanding Breuer design. With that said, I'm not going to oppose this application. I appreciate that David is recusing himself. I almost wish I could, but I actually don't mind the signage. I think it's contextual, at least from the outside of the building with the brutalist design of the, um, the Breuer building. And I think that, um, I'm going to support it. I won't say anything more except that the publicity the Frick has received from the worldwide press on how magnificent their artwork looks with looks within this building. I hope will give them pauses when for the how they place the paintings in their new home when it's finished in a couple of years. Thank you. I think we're ready for a resolution. Alita. Has a raised hand, confirm my meeting. I have, I have a question, if I may, which is, could um, does the architect know, or maybe Jane or David, what kind of signage the Met Breuer had to, to show that it was the Met? Um, I just, I'm not the architect. I oversaw the graphic design project. Oh, okay, for, sorry. Um, sorry. Um, so uh, on opening what they had on the window, they covered the windows almost completely. And it was sort of a reflection of the ceiling in the lobby. So it was these gold circles that were very reflective uh, that covered all of that. They also had a large um, kind of canvas covering the, the, the top of the bridge as you enter that was all red. Um, and they also covered the doors initially and removed those upon opening. Uh, so the doors were all red when they opened. Did they have uh, anything that said it was the med? 
they they did use the banners and they used the kiosk. Um, I I walk by this frequently, especially back then when there's more stuff open. But I don't remember. Um, I don't remember it. So thank you. Sure. Thank you. Uh, does somebody want to formulate a resolution? Anyone? Gail, do you want to formulate a resolution? Yes. Um, I move that we accept the application as presented to extend for a two year period the signage on uh, the Frick Madison. Thank you. Is there a second? I don't think I, as co chair, can second. Sarah, could you second? Second, second Jane. I'm Thank unmuted, you. so I just called out. Oh, sorry. Thank you. I appreciate it, Alita. I think we can go to a vote now. Said, are you there still? Sorry, I was muted. Uh, one second oh. while I unmute everyone else. <clears throat> <clears throat> and let me share my screen. <clears throat> Elizabeth? No. Gail? Yes. Michelle? No. Alita? Yes. Sarah? Yes. May? Yes. Marco? Yes. Kimberly? Yes. Um, David? I'm voting for cause. Taina? <laughs> Taina? Yes. Barry? Yes. And Jane? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. And thank you for your help, Saida on this one. We have one more application, which I think David's going to handle. Okay. Next application is 19 East 74th Street, Upper East Side Historic District, Stephen Harris Architects, a simplified neo-federal five-story residence originally constructed circa 1869 with a reconstructed facade designed by Schwartz and Gross in 1930. Application is for addition of second entry door to street facade, installation of new ironwork, steel and windows, an enlargement of stair bulkhead on the roof. And is Mr. Harris a representative here? Uh, Andrea is here. You can confirm unmuting. Hi, um, John Wall is gonna present. Okay. John, confirm unmuting. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Good evening. Uh, good evening, uh, committee members. Um, it's my pleasure to present this. I will try to be as efficient as possible. Um, 19 East 74th Street um, is a facade that was built in 1930 um, by the architects Gross and Schwartz, who also did uh, the apartment building in the annex immediately to the east of this building. Um, next, please. This is its location on 74th Street. Uh, just around the corner from the previous application that you just saw. Um, it is the first townhouse on the north side of the street heading towards the park from Madison Avenue. Next. Uh, these are some photos, um, the uh, 1980 tax photos. Um, I guess government standards were not particularly high in 1980. Um, uh, the designation photo from 1981 shows the condition. Um, the building is very interesting in that the facade was built not um, as a private residence, but when this building was converted into five single floor apartments, 
And so when that was done, um, steel sash windows were put in, this facade was built, which sits approximately four feet proud of the original facade, which then aligns with all of the other facades on 74th Street. Um, when this was done, it was done in both a kind of industrial um, 20th century style, which in the designation report is said to hint at bits of federal, but it's very, very little federal here, as you can see. Um, the windows are, um, the steel windows are uh, the windows that were put in in 1930. Um, the, um, uh, the, the front door um, is the um, original opening that was used for this apartment house. Next, please. Uh, this is the existing condition. Um, the door is currently on the west side and uh, there are three arches that compose the ground floor facade. Um, all of them approximately the same width, two currently as windows, one as a door. Next. Our proposal is to um, drop the, the sill of the window furthest to the east and to create another door opening. Uh, this will now be configured as a two-family house um, rather than as an apartment house. And so we would like to have two separate entrances. Um, the middle window uh, will be replaced with a wood um, double hung sash, which will match uh, the existing window. On the upper floors, we would like to replace the existing steel casements with new steel casements. Um, and we would like to configure the lights to allow slightly more light in. And since the new casements will be thermally enhanced, um, some of the dimensions are slightly larger. And so to offset uh, the fact that the existing windows are already relatively dense in terms of the amount of steel for, for glazing, we would like to consider enlarging the light slightly um, in order to compensate for the fact that the jointing and, and the meeting rails on this are slightly larger to deal with their energy efficiency. Next. Uh, this is a close up of the ground floor. Um, we are proposing to alter the ironwork. Um, the ironwork uh, is responding to other examples in the district. Um, and again, trying to uh, very much uh, be faithful to um, the original design of the uh, composition. Thank you. A close up photograph of the existing condition. Uh, interesting that you can see how there is this kind of um, joint line underneath the sill to the two windows. And so what we're proposing to do is to just remove that brick uh, within that joint line and um, uh, remove a portion of that water course. Um, and then that would be where the new door would be located. Next. There are examples throughout the um, Upper East Side of very similar conditions on townhouses, as we saw earlier at 118 East 62nd Street, the Carrera and Hastings facade that was presented, uh, there were two flanking um, uh, symmetrical doors. Um, and there are multiple examples um, within just a few blocks here. Um, one at 14 East 74th um, on our block here, one at 14 East 81st, and another here at 40 sec 42 East 74th. Um, again, um, uh, this kind of pairing of two doors um, symmetrically um, on the, the ground floor of these facades. Next. Um, these are two other examples, again, um, showing that symmetry of the door openings. Next. Um, the ironwork is, is uh, inspired by precedents here in the neighborhood. Uh, again, trying to have um, a little bit of character and yet still uh, defer to the primary features of the facade, which are quite dry, but, but elegant. Next. Uh, these are conditions of the existing windows. Um, and so these are the original single glazed puttied um, steel windows that um, are in very rough shape um, and um, we are proposing to replace. Next. Uh, this is as seen from inside. Um, again, these windows are, um, as I said, the, the, the amount of metal at the joints is, is quite um, significant um, and the windows are not symmetrically disposed. So there's a pair of casements in the middle and then there's a single casement that sits um, on the two sides. Next. On the rear, 
Um, we are proposing to um, uh, join two openings on the second floor and uh, replace the existing windows uh, with uh, new um, uh, steel windows to match the front. Next. Next. Uh, conditions of the rear here. There's still um, uh, there's some steel windows and some wood double hung windows in the rear. Next. Uh, this gives you images of the rear windows from, as seen from within. Next. And then these are the dimensions of the proposed replacement windows and uh, the existing windows. Um, and again, as you see with these more thermally efficient windows, uh, the meeting uh, joints of the casements are slightly larger than in the existing windows. Um, and to compensate for that, we are suggesting uh, to um, uh, have uh, fewer uh, lights. Um, and uh, let's go back to uh, the beginning again that shows the proposed. Great. And um, I think this sums up the, the uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone from the public who would like to speak? Just as a reminder, you can go to the reactions button at the bottom of your screen and select the raise hand feature. Okay, CP, confirm and muting. I uh, notice that the current conditions have uh, window air conditioners. Is uh, the plan to replace that with a, an HVAC unit for the entire building? Yes, there will be a central AC system. Okay. Um, and in the design of the uh, of the door and the original is not really carried over to the new one in terms of the uh, uh, more elegant um, uh, curved uh, uh, iron placement as opposed to the replacement, which is straight line uh, bars. Is there any particular reason uh, that you weren't carrying over that, uh, that design from the original? We can't ascertain whether or not the curved design on that door is actually from um, the original from 1930, but I can say that the proposed design is in keeping with the examples that we showed elsewhere in the district, and I believe more elegant uh, relative to the overall design of the facade. Okay, thanks. Okay, we're going in reverse order this time. So Marco, confirm and muting. Thank you, David. I think somebody else uh, raised the hand. Andrea Loom? Oh, no, she's controlling the presentation. Oh, oh OK, thank you. Thank you. Well, um, I, I think you did a very good improvement and uh, uh, with removing the air conditions. Um, I, I think if you see clearly in your picture, I agree with the two doors. I think it's perfectly fine. You create more, uh, give you more symmetry to the building. And I, I think it's more rich. The, the historical or not historical door, that rather than what you propose, give you more character, give you more elegance to the building. But what I call me more my attention is the changing of the of the mountains or sashes. I think doesn't reduce too much light, uh, and I think it's much better that design that way you are proposing. This is the same condition in the front and the back. In the back, I saw that you you include the railing on the second floor. I think it's very, that's very attractive. I like that idea. But that's this, oh, you have also a, a, a rooftop addition. Is that correct? Uh, no, there is a, a bulkhead on the roof that is not visible. Um, and there is an existing bulkhead. We are replacing that. Um, so it does look different in this elevation. But um, it, uh, it's, it's really just the, the rebuilding of the bulkhead. Well, it's not, but uh, yes, I agree with you, it's not visible. It's all the way in the middle of the, of the building. I think it's fine. And I, that's, that's pretty much my comments. Thank you, David. Thank you. Okay. No questions, no comments. 
Sarah? Hi. Um, so uh, many thanks to the applicant for a very efficient presentation. Um, I, CP asked one of my questions about the carryover on the door. Um, my second question was uh, about the windows. Um, it, I really like the, um, the original windows and um, how, um, and, and the multi panes really give it a different look and um, make a building that could look more industrial, um, less industrial, uh, have more character. And so what I wanted to ask um, was with regard to the issue that the applicant raised uh, about um, energy efficiency, is it that, um, that as you increase window panels, window panes that you get a kind of a reduction in the benefits on energy efficiency um, or are multi-pane windows like the original um, not available um, in an energy efficient form? I, I think the second is, is the best way to describe it is that um, one can procure um, windows in this configuration, but one typically it's very difficult to get them um, uh, thermally glazed, but even if they are thermally glazed, um, they are not thermally broken, meaning that uh, the cold that is on the outside of the steel transmits very quickly to the inside. And so uh, we are proposing windows that have um, a break um, between the outside and the inside in order to reduce the amount of thermal transmission through the metallic parts of the window system. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is really helpful. Um, I, I look forward to hearing what my colleagues think about the windows, uh, but it is clear from the photos that you've shown that the windows do need to be replaced and, um, and ideally with something that is both energy efficient and, um, and uh, consistent with the character of the building. So thank you. Thank you. Michelle? Thank you. Yeah, let me pick up on the windows. I too uh, feel very strongly actually about the original window. Um, I hear you say it's more difficult to get the thermal windows in that configuration. Maybe they're somewhere in between here with the exception of the transom I'm seeing sort of a, well, it's not really a transom, but is it four over four? I, I think if we can have more divided lights, I would like that. Also in that, in the thermal windows that have the two layers and an airspace in between, they very often, that seal breaks by itself over the years and those windows get um, permanently foggy and have to be replaced. So I don't see them as a big panacea, but that would be my, my strong feeling about the front. Can we go to the back of the building? Um, I think I remember seeing only one entrance proposed on the rear. And so my question is, as a two family house, does this mean that only one family will have access to the rear? Is that the reason for this or? Uh, that, that, that is correct. The way that it will be configured is that um, there is a terrace on the, the parlor floor, the second floor uh, that's accessible to one of uh, the residences and then the garden will be accessible to the other residents. I see. Okay. And my comments about the rear windows are the same, however, I would like to see more lights. And the third thing is, can I please see what you're proposing the bulkhead? I realize, um, you're saying you're replacing it in kind, but I'd like to see it, please. Sure, sure. Let's go ahead to the existing. <clears throat> um, Andrea, let's look at that, the photographs first. Good. There we go. So that's as seen from the front. So you're seeing uh, the elevator override, which will remain. And then next to that, you see the diagonal skylit bulkhead, which we are reconstructing as a rect rectangular volume, not as a diagonal volume. Next. Well. And then, and then here you see it up close. Okay. Reconstructing it from triangular to rectangular is not replacing it in kind. 
It's oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry if you misunderstood that. I mean, replacing it, we're not building, we're not building a room up there. We are rebuilding the bulkhead as a box, okay. which is not visible, but we're not adding an addition or a room upstairs. Okay, thank you. But the measurements will differ, of course. Of course. So can you tell me the height and maximum width of the current and then the height and maximum width of the proposed? Uh, let's see. Andrea, do you have those dimensions? <clears throat> I believe it is approximately six feet in width and approximately 12 to 14 feet in length. Um, the current one is the width of the stair. So it is approximately four feet in width um, and is not uh, the full height of, or the full length of the uh, stair. So it is approximately, let's call it 10 feet long. So I'm con confused about what you're calling height and width. Um, your, your proposed- I, 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 the, No, that's a very good point, Michelle. I did not give you the height. Um, okay. I, I was talking about the width of it in plan and the length of it in plan. Okay. Uh, the height of it is-, is, is the proposed you're telling me about? Not, no, I was, I was giving you the difference between the two of them. Um, the proposed will be four feet in width, um, 12 feet in length, and eight feet in height. And the current? The current is, is four feet in width, uh, 10 feet in length and diagonal. Uh, so it, it starts at a height of about seven or eight feet and goes down to zero. So the existing height is eight foot nine and the proposed height is 11 foot five. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. I have no problems with the uh, additional door on the front facade. I think that the symmetry works well. I do like the original windows. I think that they have more character. They're a lot more interesting. So if there's a way to kind of create a window that might not be identical to what you have there, and I appreciate the whole concept of, of trying to have the uh, thermal element, I think that that would make it far more interesting because when I look at the new windows, um, they seem almost just to, almost too modern for what you're doing with the under the archway with the two doors and with the details on the, this, uh, the window between the doors. So I would hope that you'd be able to kind of reconsider a different way of still having a window that, that gave it just a little bit more pizzazz and interest. Thank you. Elizabeth? I find that the original windows are, are really necessary to the character and texture uh, of this front facade. Uh, so I, I agree that the, the uh, door is perfectly acceptable, um, but I, I, I can't support the, the change in, in the window style. There must be something um, available now. And just a thought, and you probably won't like the idea, but wooden, wooden windows might do it. So we we have some more people still to speak. Yes, uh, Kimberly. Thank you. Um, I originally, um, or I still agree with Sarah's comments around um, the the importance of the energy efficiency, but I do take to heart the points that both Gail and Elizabeth were making on the original windows. You know adding value to the to the facade of the building. So I'll think about it a bit more, but I'm inclined to approve this application. Barry? I'm sorry, uh, I have no comment at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 
Jane? Thank you, Saida. Um, I guess I like the original windows much more too. Um, they just lend so much more distinction to the front elevation. Thank you. I guess it's my turn. I think overall, uh, the architects have done an excellent job. I think they have a difficult challenge with these windows. Uh, if you take the original 1930 windows uh, with the very small individual lights uh, to try to replicate that, uh, as the architect has already pointed out, uh, they would have to go to um, thicker members uh, to do that. And they can, of course, get thermally broken members, even if it's expensive, that can be done. Uh, and they really have two choices. They can try to do individual panes, uh, which would make them even smaller than the panes that are there now, or they can fake it, which you've all seen, and it looks fake, uh, which is to uh, have full lights of glass, uh, and then you put a layer on top of it to simulate what was there before. So when I look at trying to replicate the original windows and to do it successfully, uh, I think that uh, that's a really, really difficult challenge. Uh, I think that uh, the architect has done a good balance uh, and he's also done something which I think is uh, still a little bit industrial in feel, which those original windows are. Uh, on the other hand, he's created windows that uh, perhaps a little more appropriate in terms of their sensibility to the way we look through windows today. Uh, looking through those windows with all those individual lights um, is not as attractive as looking through the windows that they have created. Although you can say, I like the small lights, uh, looking through those windows versus looking through the windows that have been proposed, uh, I don't think you'd find them to be uh, as attractive or as nice a way to look to the outside. So my own feeling is that uh, I think the architect has done a good job. I don't think you can perfectly replicate those windows uh, with energy efficient windows. If anything, they'll get even tighter uh, and smaller, uh, or they just simply won't look real because they'll have to be done with an overlay. Uh, and I think that he's already done a good balance. So personally, I would support this in terms of uh, all of the aspects that he's done. So that's where I stand on this. So I guess we need a resolution. It's amazing. Nobody wants to make resolutions tonight. Okay. A move to approve, may I make one? A move to approve is presented. Okay, and Marco has raised his hand. No, I didn't. I didn't want to support this application. I was going to the to this approve the application. Somebody can second what I'm uh, what I Jane wants. Okay. Okay. Is there a second? Kimberly raised her hand to second. Thank you. I second the move to approve. Well. Let's go ahead and take a vote. Looks to me like it's not going to get approved, but let's at least run the run the, run the vote. Saida. Yes, one second while I uh, unmute everyone. Um, I can't remember if we're going in reverse order. It doesn't matter on the boat. Okay. Just start at the beginning. Okay. Elizabeth? Abstain. Gail? No. Michelle? No. Sarah? Uh, pass, please. Okay. Uh, May? 
Yes. Marco? No. Kimberly? Yes. Barry? Yes. One David? Minute. Yes. Jane? Yes. Okay. Oh, Sarah. Um. Oh, Sarah, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, I'll vote yes. Thank you. Oh, Saida, you have it in front of you. Yes, it's six yes, uh, three no, and one abstention. Okay. Thank you, um, Mr. Wall. Uh, we thought it was a very good presentation, even if not everybody agreed with your window. Thank you very much. Thank you all for your help. Okay, Jane. I think we could get a move to adjourn um, if there is one. I don't. Is uh, we have a raised hand from Elizabeth, from Barry, and from Michelle. Oh, I think you could assume that those are moves to adjourn. And thank you for everyone's help with that. I don't know what oh. happened to my um, connection. My internet connection, I guess, disappeared for a while. So are we adjourned, Jane? As far as I'm concerned, we are. Thank you to everyone for coming tonight. I, I'm hoping our next Landmarks Committee meeting will be on Zoom as well. In fact, gosh, we'll see what happens next. Well, we're gonna have an experiment Wednesday night. I don't know if I'll be there. I got terribly exposed to the COVID on Friday in a big way um, to somebody who has the COVID. <laughs> so We will miss you. We hope you do not suffer from your exposure. Yeah, yeah it was quite an exposure for a mm -hmm. long time. I, which I should have recognized, but I didn't, of course. But anyway, Saida, thank you as usual for all of your wonderful help no to problem. all of us and tonight, I'm especially. Okay. Thank you, Saida. Take care, all. Good night, everyone. Good, Good night. night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night David.